Hello, I'm Tony Hyman. I'm Simela Berti. I'm Hyun K. Lee. I'm Arunash Patel. And we all work together in Dresden at the Max Planck Institute for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics. And today we're going to tell you a story about how studying the dynamics of intracellular compartments led to insights about neurodegenerative disease. As so often in science, cool breakthroughs that relate to human disease come from basic research. My lab studies how the cytopathy is organized. In our biology textbooks, we learn about organelles that are surrounded by membranes, but there are many compartments in the cell without membranes. These compartments are a way for cells to concentrate components for a wide variety of biochemical reactions. And it turns out they form through a process of liquid-liquid demixing or phase separation. We can think of this much like how oil and vinegar separate from each other in a vinaigrette. To keep this liquid state, the proteins inside compartments have to be able to slither around over each other easily. But a crucial question is, what kind of proteins have this behavior? In my lab, we study proteins that contain large disordered regions, known as low-complexity or prion-like domains. Changes in many of these proteins are associated with age-related diseases. It turns out that in healthy cells, these proteins are often found in membraneless compartments. So we decided to team up with Tony's lab to see if prion-like proteins can form liquid droplets inside cells. One such protein, called FUS, is particularly interesting because it is implicated in ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. To test whether FOS forms liquid compartments, we use the following criteria. First, at steady state, without any external deforming force, liquid droplets assume spherical shape. Second, molecules within liquid droplets move around freely and rearrange. Third, liquid droplets that come close to each other fuse and become one larger droplet. To look at this, we used a new microscope built for us by Gene Myers and his lab. We found that both FOS compartments in the cell and those formed in the test tube do meet these criteria. FOS droplets are spherical, and molecules move around within these droplets. We also see FOS droplets fuse, so it was clear to us that FOS normally behaves like a liquid. In patients with ALS, FOS forms aggregates in motor neurons. So if FOS behaves as a liquid in healthy cells, why does it form aggregates in disease cells? We made versions of FUS that contain the same mutations that are found in ALS patients. However, we are a bit disappointed that in a test tube, the mutant proteins behave exactly the same as the normal proteins. One evening, while discussing this with Louise Jaworth, we realized the results made sense. Because patients with ALS live for many years without any signs of the disease. We rushed to the lab and what we discovered was really striking. When aged in a test tube, the mutant droplets form solid aggregates, which meant mutations make fuzz undergo a liquid to solid phase transition upon aging. Seeing this liquid to solid phase transition was one of those wow moments. We, like so many others, have asked ourselves why many neurodegenerative diseases are associated with protein aggregation. What our results suggest is that these proteins are normally associated with the formation of liquid compartments, where they can be concentrated, for example, to mediate biochemical reactions. However, the formation of liquid compartments comes with a trade-off that proteins in the compartments tend to aggregate. Therefore, in disease, they undergo a transition from the liquid state to the non-physiological aggregate. This is what we're calling an aberrant phase transition. Many questions remain for the future. How does a cell prevent liquid to solid phase transitions? Why are young cells protected against disease? And can we identify drugs to slow down or reverse these aberrant phase transitions? It's very likely that many prion-like proteins form liquid compartments and, with age, turn into disease-causing aggregates. Thus, our findings could provide a general explanation for why protein aggregates are a hallmark of so many age-related diseases.